Hello everyone, welcome to the part 3 video of from Tree Mathematics chapter 6 Angles and Tangents of Circles. In the previous part 1 and part 2 video, we already look at uh, four properties which involves the angles at the circumference and angles at the center. So in this video, we're going to look at another two properties. Now I have a circle here with the center of the circle, and I form an angle at the center subtended by this arc. And if I measure the arc length, let's say I get 5 cm, and I, when I measure the angles at the center, I get 40 degrees. Now if I form another angle at the center, with the arc length the same as this, 5, what do you think will be the values of the angles at the center? When we measure this, we found that this 40 degrees as well. They have the same value. And what if I form another angle at the center with the arc length here, which is also 5 cm, and when I measure this angle, get it is 40 degrees as well. What conclusion can we get from here? So the conclusion is the size of angles are equal if their arc lengths are equal. The angles have the same value, 40, 40, 40, if the arc length here are all the same. And conversely, if they have the same angles of the center, the arc length will be the same. This is the first property. Next, we form two angles at the center. One is here and another one here. Now, if we, when we measure this, which uh, is uh, 5 cm, we form an angle which is 40 degrees. When we measure the, ang the angles of uh, the center here, we found that it is 80 degrees. So you can see that when the arc length is doubled from 5 to 10, okay, it means 5 times 2 is 10, the angles is doubled as well. 40 times 2 becomes 80. We try another example here. Now we have again this, and we have an arc length of 5 cm or 40 degrees. And if now we form another angle, subtended by this arc, which is 15 cm, when we measure the angles here, we found that it is 120. So you can see that the arc length here, 15 cm, is 3 times 5 cm. 5 times 3 will be 15. And the angles here, 40 times 3 will be 120. So the angles of the at the center formed by the arc are proportional. So from here, we can state the conclusion that the change in the size of an angle, the change in the size from 40 to 120 here, is proportional to the change in the arc length. It's proportional to the change from the arc length of 5 cm to 15. When we have an angle x subtended by the arc length y, we found that the arc length is 3 times 3y here. The angles here will be 3 times the angles of x, which is 3x. And so the conclusion here is the change in the size of an angle. So x when x changed to 3x, it is proportional to the change in the arc length. We take a look at the examples. Example number 1. Find the values of a. So you can see that the arc length of this and the arc length of this are the same. Now these are the same, so according to the properties A, when the arc length are the same, the angles subtended by the arc length will, be, will have the same value, they are equal. So A equals to 35. Example 2, find the value of B. When the angles subtended by this arc length and this arc length are the same, 50 and 50, this means that the arc length has the same value. Hence, B equals to 10 centimeters. Example number 3. Find the values of X. So according to properties B, we know that the angles and the, the arc length are proportional. If we take X divided by the angles here, which is 120, then it is equal to 5 divided by 15, since they are proportional. So we can write as X divided by 120 equals to 5 divided by 15 according to properties B, since they are proportional. So when we move 120 here, you get 5 over 15 times 120, which is equals to 40 degrees. So by understanding, you can see that when the arc length is 5, and it changes from 5 to 15, it is actually 3 times, times 3, right? 5 times 3, it will be 15. Hence, we know that this angle here is 3 times bigger than x. If you want to find x, we take 120 divided by 3, you get x. So 120 divided by 3, you get x, which is 40. So example number 4, given the diagram below, if the length of the arc ABC equals to double the size of BC, 2BC, okay, so if BC is 6, ABC will be 12 because here is also 6 as well. The angles EFD 
which is here the B is 1 over 4 of the angle A angle A or C which is 80 find the values of B A so we look at the first one finding the values of B since B is EFD the angles of EFD and given that EFD equals to 1 over 4 of A or C so B equals to 1 over 4 of A or C the angles A or C is 80 degrees hence B is 1 over 4 of the 80 degrees which is 20 degrees so now we know that B is 20 degrees the next question we need to find the values of the arc which is the A now here comes the hard part okay you need to try to relate this to this because this is the only information we have so since we know B is 20 degrees and we also know that B or C equals to 40 because since given that BC is half of ABC remember because ABC is because ABC is twice BC so BC is half according to the principle uh, according to the properties we've learned just now if the length here is half of ABC the angles here is also half of 80 half of 80 is 40 so B or C is 40 because B or C is half of the 80 then if you can relate here this angles here and these angles here this is the angles at the center this is the angles at the circumference when B is 20 and B or C is 40 B is half 20 degrees is half of 40 right so when this is half of this according to the, the properties we learned in the previous video when this arc length is the same as this B will be half of 40 I repeat when BC and DA DE the A values here when they are the same these angles uh, this uh, arc length and this arc length when they are the same this angle at the second range will be half of the angles at the center and right now B is half of the center B is half of the angles at the center is this means that a is equals to 6 a is equals to BC which is equals to 6 centimeters now for the next property let the circles again and this time you have a diameter and from these two points of the diameter we form a triangle so this angle here is subtended by the two ends of a diameter okay so this angles here is uh, is subtended by this arc so since this is a diameter this is the arc of a half of the circle okay so when we measure this we will find that it is 90 degrees so the same applies when i form another angles using another point any point around here i form another angle okay so it will always be 90 degrees so the conclusion we can get is the angle at the circumference of a circle subtended by the diameter okay the, this is the angle at the circumference of a circle and it is subtended here subtended by this arc and also this diameter uh, it is subtended by this diameter here and uh, it is always 90 degrees and similarly if you are given a semicircle if you are given a semicircle this will be the diameter hence when you form an angle PQR subtended by this diameter here, it will also be 90 degrees. If given a semicircle, PQR, then the angle PQR is 90 degrees. Example number one, find the values of X. So we have X here. You can see that this is a semicircle with the center O. And there are two lines here, which, which forms the angles of 2X, which is subtended by this diameter. So we know that this angle x plus x here is 90 degrees. Hence, the angles of PQR is equals to 2x and it is also equals to 90 degrees. So 2x equals to 90 degrees. x equals to 90 divided by 2, which is 45. Example 2. Find the values of A and B given PR and QS are diameters. Okay, now PR is here, this is diameter. QS is here. If I look at these angles here, A plus A, the two A's here, you can find that this is the, the, the total angle here is an angle formed at the circumference of circle subtended by this diameter here. 
Okay, you can see the line here. So 2a plus a here is subtended by the diameter PR, which across the center. That's why it's a diameter. So when this happens, a plus a is 90 degrees. Huh? So PQR, 90 degrees, 2a, 90 degrees, a equals to 45. Now we look at B. We want to find B. You can see that B is actually one of the angles in this yellow triangle. So since we already know that A is 45, we want to find B. If we know the values of this angle, then we can find B. And actually you can see that this angle here is another angle subtended, subtended by the diameter QOS. Hence, we know that this is 90 degrees because it is an angle subtended by this diameter. So here is 90 degrees. So if you take the total 180 minus 45 minus 90 degrees, we can get B. So we get B is 180 minus 45 minus 90, which is 45 as well. Example 3 diagram shows a semicircle with a center O, determine the value of A and B. Okay, again, if semicircle, this angle here, okay, if we look at this uh, triangle, which is formed by this uh, yellow line, this angle here are angles subtended by this and this sub, subtended by this diameter. This angle here is the angle subtended by this diameter. Hence, we know that this is 90 degrees. So if you want to find A, since this is a triangle, 180 minus 90 minus 30, you can get a because 180 is the total interior angles so a equals to 180 minus 30 minus 90 a equals to 60 degrees now if you want to find b the first thing you need to notice here is you look at this line from o to p this is what we call as a radius from o to q this is also a radius so o p and o q have the same value when they have the same value, this triangle POQ is uh, an isosceles triangle. It's an isosceles triangle because this and this, they, are, they have the same value. And since this is an isosceles triangle, the base, the base angle, 30 here and here, will be the same. So you have this. Okay. This, so from there, I think you know how to find B. 180 minus 30 minus 30, you get B. 20 minus 60, you get 120 degrees. So in the coming video, we will combine all the properties we've learned so far and try to use it to solve problems. That's all. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.